All right. Well, Jim, several listeners in the last few days have been sending in various clips, various quotes from a Kenny Omega. It's not an interview. He, I guess, was on a video game stream talking to fans. (laughs) But I mean, that's kind of, that fits in. Where else would he be? Where else would he be but on a streaming video game? But we have speculated and talked about his injuries. He's been gone almost a year now. And apparently he's still... Really? How time flies when you're enjoying yourself? Well, actually, I think AEW could kind of use him with some of these other guys out there. It would be refreshing. No, no, I'm not going to say. There's no reason to make a bad situation worse. Well, the bad situation may never become worse if the injuries keep piling up. So I have some audio here for you to review of apparently Kenny Omega on the CEO stream. Someone else is playing a game. He's actually watching them play a game. Wait a minute. So he's on the internet watching someone else that he doesn't know play a video game? Well, I assume that's what it is. Right now it's a still frame of a guy who I assume is the one playing the game and Kenny has his hands on his head. So I know he's not playing. He's a got game. his hands on the guy's head while a guy on his own game? head. On his own head. Before oh, you go, where's the guy's head? The guy's head is right in front of the camera, talking to the camera. Kenny has oh, his so hands on his own his, head. His mouth. His mouth is. He's speaking. His mouth is clearly visible. Let's get some audio here and find out what you think about Kenny Omega talking about his injuries. What has your daily routine been like getting into working shape? Oh my god! <laughs> you want to talk about it? The mere mortal couldn't comprehend it. No. Look, I, uh... If I get another major setback, that's it. That's that's it, I'm done. Because I can't do this ever again. It's like two times, three times a day, really painful rehab. And and without even knowing, like, what's it going to be like once I get back in the ring, I have no Mm. clue. Scary, actually. And, like, you know, you see some people that come back to the ring and, um... You're just happy to see them back. And I think that there's a different kind of expectation put on me. And I think that anything less than what they're expecting. Wait, is wait, already can we? Un- what Batman episode is that? Can we listen to that now instead? That appears to have started a video game that they're playing. It appears to be Street Fighter of some sort here, but any. Initial thoughts what on... What, is this a public forum? How did we get this recorded? Is he just blathering to random people on the internet about this? Well, in a this sense, This isn't a yes. show? This isn't a program? This is just... He's just... A session. Having a conversation. It's a people. session. His friends are playing games. He's hanging out. And willing to talk to the people typing in questions to be asked by someone else. Where does a grown adult man get this much free time? At the arcade. Where do you where do you think? The fuck. Well, he has been out. I mean, th- I'm sure the people making the video game are very happy he's busy right now doing something else. But here he is talking well, about all anyway, these injuries uh, and the I idea mean, he may be done if he has another serious setback. Well, maybe he should have thought of that before he started doing all the goofy shit where he dives out of the ring like a fucking whooping crane and just lands willy nilly wherever and all this other stuff. Um. I don't wish that he should injure himself. I just, I think he should take this time off to reflect on his profession and get a new one so we don't have to watch him anymore. I don't want him to suffer any pain. I, hey, you know what? He could be the richest video game developer in the world and just develop video games out the sphincter constantly, and I would just... Be happy as a clam for him, as long as he's not involved in the wrestling business, which he sucks at. So I do not wish him ill, but as far as am I crossing my fingers, we don't have to watch him on wrestling television again? Yes, because he's a fucking embarrassment with his phone sex voice and his doll wrestling and his kid wrestling and his fucking whatever the fuck else he tries to do to give a middle finger to the wrestling business. So, and it, did you turn the AC it, up? No, it, it, it's just, it's a hundred degrees over here. Besides that, again, can you see Mick Jagger, if Mick Jagger had had an operation on his vocal cords, 
Can you see him hanging out on the internet talking to some random guy, giving them the prognosis on his return to singing and recording while they're playing a video game? Or is Mick going to sit down with fucking, I don't know, 60 minutes or a goddamn Wall Street Journal or some major news outlet about that? I did, I did, yeah. I'll give this random video game fan the scoop that I may never wrestle again if I get one more injury. And what what does Tony Khan think about that? Wouldn't he say, hey, dipshit, instead of blabbing about your prognosis or your condition or an update or whatever for free on the fucking internet with some goof, how about we'll advertise you're going to come on my national television show for the next two weeks and when you do, you can say the same thing there that you just said on Twitch or whatever, and we'll get a half of a rating off of it, and then it'll get a bunch of news and all the websites will be talking about it off our TV, not off your goddamn leisure time activities. That is interesting because Tony Khan does allow the guys, obviously, a little more leeway with third-party deals as compared to WWE. When it's something like this, don't you kind of wish it was on your YouTube channel as well, opposed yeah, to yeah. that's the thing is, no, I'm not advocating that they ought to do like the WWF and take away the talents money that they make on YouTube or Twitter or whatever the fuck. If they're doing something not related to wrestling, we've talked about that playing video games or whatever, but the talent should have the common sense that God gave a goose as mama Cornette used to say to, instead of, just randomly mixing with people on the internet and giving them little tidbits of wisdom or potential newsworthy uh, announcements, advertise it. Get a fucking audience. Do it <laughs> to, to, to build something and to further something instead of just, ah, I'm sitting around here with my dick in my hand playing video games. I'll talk to this fucking guy. Jesus Christ, I wish I had that much spare time. Yeah, and if guys want to do this where they sit there and have someone ask them questions that are typed in, you can do that on your channel. It's actually probably a good idea for some content, some live content you could do on the channel to keep people there. But let's get a little more audio from Kenny Omega about his injuries. Oh, seriously? Comeback. All right. Unrealistic is going to lead to a lot of ridicule, which is what I get every day anyway. <laughs> so you could probably under understand and imagine how difficult it is struggling twice or three times a day trying to get things to work that never maybe worked before and trying to reroute things in your brain to get around the things that aren't going to heal yeah people think you know i oh kenny kenny's hurt he took time off Snap your fingers, I come back, I'm 100%. Life doesn't work that way. Bodies don't work that way. Athletes don't work that way. It's very difficult to formulate this plan and to <laughs> execute it. And we'll see how... Everything he says, even when I, he's trying to be genuine, it's like he's doing a press conference... For no one, you know. Well, like he, why are why are the periods in the middle of the sentences? It's like he's cruising on Lake Havasoma and he's losing track of where he's going. Because he's trying hard to find the right words to use. It's almost like it's a performance, is what it comes across as. It comes across as disingenuous. Well, we've got your thoughts and theories on Omega here, but to open us up to a bigger conversation, what he's talking about the pressure a wrestler would feel from coming back from multiple injuries at once. And I don't know how many wrestlers have done that where, I mean, I can't imagine too many have had the opportunity to take a year off and have multiple surgeries to heal everything up or as much as possible. But do you think, forget about the fans, do you think the people in the office, well, forget about that because nowadays, we have to talk about nowadays because back then they were wrestlers. Do you think like a Vince or the people in the WWE or a Tony Khan? Do you think it's easy or hard to understand physically what some of these guys, especially some of these guys that are closing in on 40, what they're going through on the inside? Well, no, you group that awkwardly. It's a lot easier for Vince to understand than it is for Nick Khan or Tony Khan or any of the other cons. Because Vince has had some of those surgeries. 
And Vince says, even, you know, bodybuilding isn't, to me, it isn't a professional sport for fuck's sake. But he's dealt with athletes and dealt with close friends that have had surgeries, had a few of his own from the quads and blah, blah, blah. Vince understands a little bit more, but at the same time, Vince understands the guys the way that they they used to deal with this situation. If you had a top guy that had a severe injury, he'd take as much time off as he just, as he had to, and he'd come back as quickly as he could, and he'd modify what he did in the ring. And to work around that part for however long or forever. But now, in the modern era, the guys have the guaranteed contracts, and they have the luxury of being paid even though they're they're not... Uh, they're not working. And also the companies have the luxury of guaranteed income because, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, when you got hurt in the old days, you couldn't work. You didn't get paid. That's why guys rushed back. Guys also rushed back because if if you were a top guy in a territory and you had either a, an interest in seeing the business continue to do well, or you had a piece of it or whatever, the territory was suffering. Lawler being out for a year with that leg, the reason he was out that long is because he tried to come back too fast and re-injured it at least once. I think it was twice. Because everybody was losing a fucking fortune without him on the cards. It's been the same in, in other situations, in other places where a guy was, you know, instrumental or integral to the territory's success. So, you know, anybody that's been around wrestling long enough from the territory days knows what it takes, you know, to do what these guys do and also how to work around those things. There's never been the luxury until modern times where, like you said, a guy could just take a year, a year and a half off and he's going to get paid and he can have whatever surgeries he wants and fix everything that, you know, that's, that's a great thing, but you still, it, with with old Olivier there, he's in his late thirties, and he's had a variety of injuries. If he intends to come back and try to do the same shit that he was doing with those swan dives over the top rope, out into the ether, and all this other foolish shit, even if he hadn't been hurt, he's getting a little old for that shit to begin with. So he's going to need to, if he doesn't want to modify his style then he shouldn't come back because if he doesn't modify his style, he's going to hurt himself again. And then by his own words, he'll be done. He's not, ge he's not getting younger. It doesn't matter whether he's been hurt or not. He ain't going to be doing that shit when he's 50. So where's the cutoff date? Is it 47? Is it 42? Is it 39? Is it today? Yeah. That's where it's going to get interesting because traditionally with wrestling, the older you got, the smarter you got. And that usually meant you knew you didn't have to do as much. Yeah, but this guy doesn't have the capability to be smart or learn because he doesn't understand the wrestling business. He doesn't know anything about it. It's obvious. The way he talks, the way he works, <laughs> the way he he thinks that he thinks that he's a goddamn thespian, a stage artist, acting his, out his art in a physical sense. He doesn't nor has he ever understood what the wrestling business is or is supposed to be. So he's the last one that's going to be able to figure out a way to do what's smart for himself and his well-being in his career. He's going to try to go out in a blaze of glory with that fucking Pavarotti solo, regardless. But beyond so Omega, just this overall problem. You know, in baseball, there's a saying, there's an expression that when a pitcher comes up, he knows how to throw, he doesn't know how to pitch. And a lot of the times... A pitcher, as he gets older, and maybe doesn't have the velocity he once had... Learns how to pitch. Learns how to pitch. Learns how to fuck with the mind of the batter. Learns how to play games with him. Learns how to do things other than throw a fastball faster than anyone else. And that was traditionally what would happen in wrestling. But again, beyond Omega, a lot of these guys that have become stars in what I will just call the work rate period, where it wasn't as much about character and promos, or angles, or things you could pull off later in life, 
it was about getting people to love you and your style of wrestling and the kind of matches you're having because of that, because of the kind of matches you're having. Your moves. Because of your moves. Do you think that kind of wrestler is going to have a really difficult time past the age of 35, 40? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because it's not, you said, well, a pitcher, a young pitcher knows how to throw, but he don't know how to pitch. And then as he gets older, he learns how to pitch. Some of them don't. And some wrestlers, they can do all that shit when they're young, but as they got older, the good ones would learn how to work and the bad ones wouldn't. And I don't, that for the same reason that right now, Austin Theory is what we say earlier in this program, he's 24 years old. Yeah. He's a much better worker than Kenny Omega is and ever will be right now. Now, you know people are going to lose their minds if they hear you say that. Explain. Because he's a better worker. Because work has nothing to do with doing the fucking moves. It, it helps if you can. But it seems to me that a guy like Theory understands what the business is, at least has to be now. He's, you know, in the old days, it was understanding what the business is. It's more important to get them to believe what we're doing than it is to put on a great show because they'll come back to see more of it. We give them a great show, they'll never come back again. We piss them off and make them want to come back and see next week, we've made more money. But just with Austin Theory, his basics, his fundamentals, the way that he moves and conducts himself in the ring, and the things that he, the moves that he does and the things that he does fit him and don't embarrass or hurt the business or anybody that he's working with. Twinkle Toes just does moves and dives. He doesn't have any idea how to put a match together to make sense from start to finish. He can't fucking hit the ropes properly. He's self-trained. He acts, he's a video game character. And that's one-dimensional and fucking blah. And it's the same thing all the time. Because he's acting like he's a character in a video game. That's why his matches don't make sense. That's why nobody sells anything except when they do sell. They they hit the right button, so they got to sell. Theory's a guy like MJF. He'll be able to play with your emotions. He'll be able to take you on a ride. He'll be able to psychologically and subliminally get you into what he's doing because there's no holes in the logic in the match. And if, if Theory has as much freedom on promos as MJF does, then he'll be able to talk you in instead of just this goof pretending to be a video game character because he likes to sit around with his joystick in one hand and press the buttons on his video game with the other one. That's why Austin Theory is a much better worker. I didn't say acrobat. I didn't say move doer. I didn't even say performer. He's a better worker. And what the business that we're in relies on working, or it used to, and it still should. There'd be more people watching it. Well, Jim, I have some breaking news. It is just coming across the wire that Dave Meltzer has hired an attorney. He heard what you just said. <laughs> And this is blasphemous, and he's hoping something actionable. If it's blasphemous, he ought to have hired a priest so that I could be exercised. But since I'm in pretty good shape right now, I'll see his attorney and I'll raise him an attorney that will defend me from his spurious claim. And you know the man I'm talking about, the man, the myth, the legend. Play that music. <laughs> I'll play it again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been wrongfully terminated, <laughs> if you've been harmed in any way, if you have a co-host of a podcast that has too quick a finger on the soundboard, regardless of what predicament you happen to find yourself in, just give newlawoffice.com a log on or a call at 888-692-8084 and the legendary Stephen P. New 
will pick up that phone and tell you to hit the bricks and get lost. No, he will pick up that phone and he will then pick you up several million dollars in judgments like he's done for so many. We read off the amazing figures. It is now well in excess of 80-something million dollars that Stephen P. New has gotten in judgments on wrongful termination cases and wrongful injury cases and wrongful things of such that he makes right because nobody turns right into wrong or wrong into right, which if you've got a right, he'll turn it into a wrong. If you've got a wrong, he'll turn it into a right. And believe me, two rights don't make a wrong, but they do get you going in the opposite direction. Newlawoffice.com, Stephen P. New, 888-692-8084. And we are going to have him shortly on one of these programs talking about some of the uh, repercussions that some of the other legal events and things have in the uh, in, uh, as related to the wrestling business. Some very interesting things that we're going to be discussing with Stephen here very shortly on the program. Uh, you know, a lot of wrestlers just put themselves at the risk of getting sued just on a daily basis and don't even realize what they're doing. But by gum, I do, because I've been sued about 15 times. I can give you a whole list of things you're not supposed to do. Newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084 for the man, the myth, the legend, Stephen P. New, and whatever case you may have against a greedy, avaricious corporation or individual that is, through their own negligence and lack of caring, have put you in harm's way. There is recourse in the legal justice system as long as the asshole that's messed with you has a big fat wallet, Stephen P. New will put his hand in that man's pocket and pull that wallet out along with balls and several other things. What goes on in that mind? He's going to pull out Who, balls? Stephen P. New's? Your mind? What are you talking about? He's going to pull out balls? He'll stick his hand in the man's pocket, he'll pull his wallet out, and he'll pull that guy's balls out with it for trying to mess with a, a client of his. That's and what he doesn't Stephen just, P. New does. And he doesn't just mess with rich people. Anyone who is nefarious and does awful things, he's Well, why do you want to sue a fucking homeless bum? What's that going to get you? A box? Yeah, that's why Willie Squeegee. Sutton robbed. That's why Willie Sutton robbed banks. He said. They said, "Why do you rob banks?" He said, "That's where they keep the money." All right. Well, let's see where you they... know. One time, I I actually I was with Stephen P. New one day, and he had his hands full. He was carrying a box, and he said, "Would you reach in my pocket and get my car keys?" Well, I reached in his pocket, and I was fiddling around in his pants pocket there, and I couldn't find the car keys. And he said, I bet you feel a little foolish reaching in my pocket like that. And I said, I certainly do. He said, if you go just a little deeper, you'll feel a little nuts. All right. Stephen P. New. Yep. He's the man for you.